If you've spent any amount of time researching HDR, you've probably encountered a bunch of different terms like HLG, PQ, or ST2084, and been confused about what these terms actually mean in relation to HDR content. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about HDR display standards. So before we get started with this video, I recommend you watch my previous video explaining HDR if you haven't already. I'll have it linked in the description down below. In this video, I'm just going to be focusing on the differences between the main HDR formats that are out there. And all of the formats we're going to be discussing today have the same fundamental goals. Increased dynamic range, wider color gamut, and increased bit depth for an improved viewing experience. So to get started, let's talk about the simplest form of HDR, Hybrid Log Gamma. Hybrid Log Gamma, or HLG for short, is an HDR standard that seeks to be backwards compatible with SDR hardware. One of the problems with HDR is that it can't be displayed correctly on ordinary SDR monitors, especially if that monitor is old and doesn't know what HDR is. So, HLG solves this problem by encoding the image such that it can be interpreted as either HDR or SDR and look good either way. How it does this is in the name, Hybrid Log Gamma. HLG uses a special gamma curve, which is shaped like an ordinary display gamma for the bottom half of the signal, but logarithmic for the top half. By encoding an HDR signal using this hybrid gamma, you basically get an SDR image with normal shadows and midtones, but a strong highlight roll off. An SDR display can just show this image the way it would any other, and it will look pretty normal. The display doesn't need to know that the image was encoded with HLG, so this works even with old hardware. However, an HDR display will be able to recognize the HLG signal and it will perform a transform which reverses the logarithmic curve at the top half of the signal, essentially unpacking the highlights and allowing them to go up into the HDR range. So we have one signal that can be either SDR or HDR depending on how it's interpreted. This makes HLG especially popular for applications like broadcast TV, where it's impractical to transmit two separate versions of the show simultaneously. You can just broadcast the HLG signal, and it will work with both SDR and HDR viewers. However, there is a downside to this approach as well. While HLG is backwards compatible, the HDR experience it offers isn't that impressive compared to other HDR formats out there. That brings us to the other type of HDR, perceptual quantization. Perceptual quantization, PQ, is another method of encoding an HDR signal. It uses a more typical gamma curve, but with a greatly expanded luminance range. In PQ, 100% corresponds to 10,000 nits instead of just 100 nits. The most common PQ curve is called ST2084. There are several different formats which utilize PQ, which we'll go over in a moment, but first we need to talk about tone mapping. One of the problems with HDR currently is that almost no displays on the market are able to display HDR to its full potential. PQ may theoretically support luminance values up to 10,000 nits, but even professional grade mastering displays can only manage up to about 3,000 nits, and consumer displays are usually much worse still. Pretty much any display can handle the 100 nits and Rec. 709 gamut of SDR, so there's no need to make any changes to the signal. But with HDR, the theoretical limits of the format are far beyond what the displays can actually handle, so we need to employ some sort of tone mapping to make everything fit correctly. But this presents a problem. Let's say we have an HDR monitor that can display up to 500 nits of brightness, and we want it to accept a PQ signal. PQ could theoretically go as high as 10,000 nits, so it's entirely possible there will be values in the signal that are much brighter than our display can handle. To deal with this, our display will use tone mapping to make 10,000 nits in the signal correspond to 500 nits out of the display, 
And of course, in order to preserve the tones of the image, it'll need to map the rest of the signal down to lower brightness values as well. Well, now everything is really dark. Even though 10,000 nits is possible in PQ, almost nothing actually gets that bright. So the vast majority of our image is going to be displayed well below the 500 nit maximum. This is an extreme example, but it illustrates why we need metadata. Metadata is information packaged alongside the signal, which tells our display how much of the PQ container will actually be used. It includes things like the maximum peak brightness of the image, as well as the maximum average brightness across an entire frame. Odds are, these values will be quite a bit lower than the theoretical maximums. So let's imagine we have a show that never actually gets any brighter than 600 nits. Our 500 nit display will then know that it can use much less extreme tone mapping without running the risk of clipping. So basically, metadata allows us to make much more efficient use of our display's capabilities, since it knows ahead of time which values it will and won't be asked to display. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the differences between the different PQ formats. The most widely adopted PQ format is HDR10. It uses the ST2084 PQ curve, allows a maximum luminance of 1000 nits, and uses the REC 2020 color space with 10 bit per channel encoding. HDR10 is an open standard, and it's the least demanding of the PQ formats. The main issue with HDR10, though, is that it only uses static metadata. The maximum peak and average brightness values are calculated across the entire video, instead of for each scene or each frame. So if your show is mostly dark, but contains one really bright scene, that one scene is going to dictate how the rest of the show is going to be processed by the display. To address this, a new standard called HDR10 Plus was developed. HDR10 Plus incorporates dynamic metadata, which provides separate information for each scene, making the tone mapping process even more efficient. HDR10 Plus also allows for luminance values up to 4000 nits and resolutions up to 8K. Finally, we have the Dolby Vision standard. This is the highest quality but most demanding standard currently on the market. It allows for luminance values up to 10,000 nits, incorporates dynamic metadata, and uses 12 bits per channel for encoding instead of 10. The downside to Dolby Vision is that it's a proprietary standard, meaning you have to pay a license fee in order to create content in it or incorporate the technology into a device. There is also one final format that I want to discuss. YouTube supports HDR, but it doesn't technically adhere to any of the standards we described before. Instead, YouTube is pretty lenient, and they'll allow you to upload in pretty much whatever HDR format you want. According to YouTube's documentation, they allow content to be uploaded in HLG or PQ in the Rec 2020 color space with 10 or 12 bits of depth. YouTube doesn't specify which HDR format they actually deliver to users, though personally I suspect it's HDR10. All of the HDR formats in use today offer a significant improvement over SDR, though it can be beneficial to understand the differences between them, especially if you're a content creator. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.